Let's talk about intrusive thoughts. Martin Luther said, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. And that quote was about the importance of taking our thoughts captive and being aware of what we're thinking about. So what does the Bible have to say about this? It's important to know that not everything you think is coming from yourself. Thoughts can come from God, thoughts can come from ourselves, and thoughts can also come from the enemy of our souls, Satan and his demonic host. So one of the most important things when you're dealing with intrusive thoughts is to not automatically become condemned and think, oh my gosh, I'm such a terrible person. I can't believe these thoughts would go through my head because oftentimes they're not coming from you. And you can tell this by the fact that the thoughts make you feel afraid, horrified, disgusted, worried. And you're not thinking, oh, these thoughts are so wonderful. You're thinking, oh, I don't wanna be thinking that. And that's an indicator that it's not coming from you. So it's important to constantly discern the spirit because one of Satan's biggest tricks is to throw a thought in your head and then right after condemn you for having the thought. So step one is to identify the source and step two is to resist the condemnation of the enemy. Now what do you do when you realize that this is a demonic thought? Step three is to cast down imaginations and you can do this in many ways but I literally rebuke those thoughts in Jesus's name. If I'm in public I do it in my head. If I'm by my myself, I do it out loud. That's just my way of saying, I know that thought is not coming from God and it's not coming from me and I reject it. Other people feel comfortable wording it different ways. I've heard some people say, I don't consent to that thought. The wording is not as important as you essentially breaking agreement with the thought and rejecting it however you choose to do so. Step four is to ignore and redirect after that point. What you don't wanna do is get into a weird tug of war with your thoughts because that's not healthy and what you give focus to expands and grows. So once you've identified that something's not coming from God and you're like, I reject that thought, then you're going to consciously redirect your focus onto something else. So for example, a lot of times people have intrusive thoughts when they're trying to pray and some crazy picture flashes into their head. At that point, you can continue to pray. Don't let the weird intrusive thoughts stop you from whatever you're trying to do because oftentimes that's why Satan is sending them. He's actually trying to divert your attention from doing good things. Now on the topic of prayer, we move to step five, which is turn your worries into prayers. So for example, <laughs> I'll just confess one of my worst battles with intrusive thoughts has always had to do with something bad happening to a loved one. So when I was young or a teenager, I'd constantly worry about like my parents getting into a car crash. When I got married, those worries started to include people like my husband. So if for whatever reason, and Satan is really assaulting me with intrusive thoughts of something horrible happening to my family. In addition to discerning that that's not coming from the Lord, rejecting that thought, I will also go ahead and add prayer. So in a way, it's almost like you're turning Satan's weapon back against him. Cause you're like, oh, thanks for reminding me to pray for my loved ones. And this is something very quick. It doesn't have to turn into a four hour intercession. It could just be something super quick. Like, Lord, I pray Psalms 91 protection over my husband and parents today or whoever it is that you're worried about, if that happens to be your intrusive thought. Step six, if you are in a particularly rough mental battle, use your voice and speak out loud. This can be putting on worship music and singing. This could be reading the Psalms out loud or praying out loud. Or if you're comfortable with it, you can even resist the enemy out loud. The idea is that oftentimes when you're speaking out loud, you're interrupting what is happening in your mind. If you wanna test this theory, you could think about explaining directions to someone to get to your house, but then all of a sudden start saying your ABCs loud, that's gonna interrupt whatever thought is going on in your head. But typically that only needs to happen in more extreme situations where you are really struggling with your thoughts. Oftentimes, for me at least, after resisting a thought, praying if it's something that I'm worried about and continuing to put my focus on something else, that's enough. But on certain days, you might wanna take it to the next level by using your voice out loud as long as you're not around other people, of course. Now, my last four tips are gonna be long-term solutions.
conditions. Because the truth is our mind is very much like a garden and we're constantly having to pull up weeds and we're wanting to plant seeds that we want to reap a harvest over. So step number seven is to renew your mind by reading scripture, memorizing scripture, listening to sermons. This is really important because this is gonna help you discern truth from lies because Satan's number one weapon against us is always going to be lies, deception, and distortion. And you want to be able to learn the difference between God's voice and the enemy's voice because one of the worst things he does is comes to us pretending to be an angel of light. When I was much younger and I would get those constant worries and fears about my parents, initially I wasn't sure if the Holy Spirit was trying to warn me or if it was Satan harassing me. But the more time that I've spent with God, I've realized not only by experience is this never God speaking to me, but also that the Holy Spirit doesn't speak in fear and torment and in paralyzing terror the way the enemy does. So I can just discern much more quickly, this is the voice of the Lord or it's not. But that only comes from reading scripture and really getting to know God's voice and personality. Step eight is to guard your eyes and your ears. I'm sure you've already heard it before, but I'll remind you again, what you are reading, what you're listening to, what you're looking at on social media, movies, TV shows, all of that, that's all going somewhere in your subconscious. And sometimes it will pop up at inconvenient times. So sometimes intrusive thoughts are coming from the enemy, but sometimes it's actually fruit from negative seeds you've sown by what you've been feeding on. Quick example is I grew up with my parents watching horror movies all the time. They also loved true crime documentaries that didn't blur out anything. So there was tons of scenes in my brain from a teeny tiny child of very terrifying images. And that created a lot of problems for me with nightmares, with intrusive thoughts, with fear. And the Bible says that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So I had to make that correlation eventually when I got old enough to have more of a choice about what I would be watching and to say, you know what, that's not good for me. I don't want those images from horror movies or true crime documentaries popping up when I'm trying to go to sleep or whatever. So just really be mindful of what you are putting inside of yourself. Number nine. Now this is almost like a disclaimer, but there are actual mental conditions that can create very extreme intrusive thoughts. Those could be things like OCD, PTSD, sometimes even conditions like schizophrenia. So if you are finding that your intrusive thoughts are debilitating your life, you're not able to get your normal tasks done, that is sometimes beyond the scope of something that you can just deal with on your own. I would encourage you to talk with a counselor, maybe get medical advice just to make sure that there's not something else going on. And that also goes into number 10. And this is probably my most controversial point because there's many opinions on this, but I will just tell you mine. I do think sometimes intrusive thoughts can be symptoms of some form of severe demonic oppression that is beyond the scope of just sometimes saying, I resist that thought. And only you would know if it's something that you're being completely defeated by no matter what you do. If you've tried renewing your mind, you tried praying your worries, you tried sinking worship, like you've tried everything, which most people haven't by the way. But if you truly have and none of it's budging, then it might be time to look into fasting and prayer and even repentance in an organized systematic way. I would highly recommend a book called The Bondage Breaker by Neil T. Anderson and Reclaiming Surrendered Ground by Jim Logan. That will take you in a systematic form of repentance to really see if you have actually opened doors to Satan in any area of your life that is just kind of like opening up the floodgates for severe demonic oppression. So those are just some of my thoughts in a quick video, but please, by all means, let me know if you have any questions and I can get more in depth on any one of these topics. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. God bless.